Hey guys, this is your daily dose of movies. Today I'm talking about horror action movie, Train to Pusan with a budget of $8,500,000 and rating of 7.6 by IMDb. The film begins when a truck approaches a toll booth that is being sterilized, with numerous workers in hazmat suits sanitizing the surroundings. The truck driver passes through the toll booth and accuses the workers of slowing him down, but the workers assure him that nothing is wrong and that the area is simply being cleansed due to a minor leak at a neighboring nuclear plant. He gets distracted by his ringing phone as he passes the toll booth and accidentally drives over a doe. He goes back in his truck and drives away after assessing the area. Despite the crash, the doe staggers to its feet and turns to reveal that it is infected. Elsewhere, Sok Wu is a busy fund manager in Seoul who hardly has time for his daughter Suen. Suen reveals that she wishes to see her mother in Pusan. After a tough day at work, Sok Wu mistakenly purchased the identical birthday present he purchased last year. Sok Wu is first hesitant because of work, but his mother persuades him otherwise by showing him a video of Suen singing Aloha Oe at a school recital, where she stops singing in the middle of the song since Sok Wu couldn't attend because of work. Sok Wu books the next KTX train to Pusan the next morning out of remorse. Sok Wu takes Suen to the station early in the morning, only to nearly collide with an oncoming swarm of ambulances and police cars. Suen reaches out the car window and catches an ember in her hand, prompting Sok Wu to notice the burning structure in the distance. He mentions that something horrible is going on, yet he still drives to the station. They board the train, which also includes the tough working class husband Sangwa and his pregnant wife Song Kyong, a high school baseball team rich but selfish CEO Yon Suk, and a pair of elderly sisters, Ingle and Jongle, as well as a homeless man who appears to be aware of the situation while everyone else believes it's just riots out there. As the train is about to depart, a spasming young woman boards with a massive bite wound on her leg. Outside the train, the station manager signals the KTX to go, only to observe a group of people screaming at something unseen on top of the station stairs. Suen looks out the window as the manager is ambushed by a vicious human, which only she witnesses. Frightened, Suen gets up to go to the bathroom. A train attendant in the lower numbered compartments finds the diseased woman and attempts to resuscitate her, only for the woman to bite her. The zombie then hooks onto the attendant's neck, causing to panic and crash into the baseball team's car. The two then collapse to the ground, both zombies. The two proceed to attack the majority of the baseball team, spawning a horde of zombies in the process. Only four students survive. Baseball player Yong Guk, his crush Jin Hee, and two other boys. Suen unwittingly heads towards the lower compartments, looking for a bathroom, as the zombies sprint towards the upper compartments and infect everyone in their path. Sok Wu awakens to find Suen missing from her seat. He then receives a phone call from a co-worker informing him that violent riots have broken out throughout Korea. Soon after, a swarm of terrified people from the lower compartments rush past his seat, screaming and running. Sok Wu runs in the opposite way, thinking Suen is in danger, and finds Suen standing in front of an incoming army of zombies. He takes her, and they are pursued by the horde, but Sok Wu manages to enter his compartment and attempts to shut it nearly keeping Sungwa and Song Kyong out. The survivors fight to barricade the entrance, only to discover that the zombies are unable to open it. Song Kyong covers the windows with water and newspapers, which alleviates the situation by tricking the zombies into believing they are not there. It turns out that they only attack if they see or hear someone. The conductor reassures the survivors over the intercom that the train will not go to Pusan, but stop at Daegu Station as he has been informed that the military has been dispatched there. Yon Suk calls conductor and asks about the situation at Daegu, which Sok Wu overhears and deduces from it that all arriving passengers at Daegu will be forcibly quarantined. He makes a private call to a co-worker and convinces him to pick him and Suen up separately so they won't be quarantined. The train then arrives at the abandoned Daegu station, and Sok Wu takes Su An towards the east exit where they will be picked up, while the others go towards the main exit. The homeless man follows Sok Wu, having overheard his phone call. The three go down the hallway where they see a soldier in the distance. Relieved, Sok Wu tells Su in to stay where she is, 
and he rushes towards the soldier for help, only to see that he is injured. The soldier begs them to help him before a horde of infected soldiers round the corner, trampling and consuming him. The survivors notice a big number of uniformed men towards the bottom of the escalator and realize the soldiers are all infected, and the deployment has failed. As they run back up the escalator and into the station, several passengers are consumed and infected. Sok Wu, who is still within the station concourse and is being chased by zombies, tells Suen to flee. She does so and runs into Song Kyong and Sung Wu, who are racing back to the train with the rest of them. Sang Wu fights off the horde alongside Sok Wu, Yong Guk, and the two other baseball players, while Song Kyong takes Suen and runs to the platform. They dash to the train after successfully locking the departure door. When Yong Guk's two pals reach the platform, but they are attacked and infected. Meanwhile, Jin Hee, Yon Suk, and a few others have boarded the train safely. When a glass bridge above the train shatters, zombies shower down on the platform. One of the zombies attacks Ingol and Jongol, separating them. Jongol is pulled inside Jin Hee's compartment while Ingol, Song Kyong, and Suen flee in the opposite direction. While Yong Guk, Sok Wu, and Sung Wu safely enter a safe compartment, Song Kyong, Suen, Ingol, and the homeless man barricade themselves inside a lavatory in one of the lower contaminated compartments. Sung Wu phones his wife and discovers she is stuck in the restroom with a few other people. Unwilling to let them perish, the three of them start fighting their way through the lower compartments to save them. During this process, they realize that the zombies are blind in the dark and only respond to sound. They take advantage of this and successfully rescue them, and they all rush together to the first compartment, where Yonsuk, Jinhee, Jongol, and the manager are. Yongguk texts Jinhee to let her know that they have rescued the survivors and are on their way to her compartment. When she cheerfully informs the others, they respond with animosity and decide to lock the entrance to their compartment to prevent the group from entering, fearing that they may be infected while dashing through zombies. With the door locked, Yongguk tries to bust it open, while Sok Wu and Sung Wu try to keep the zombies on the other side out. Sung Wu is bitten by one of the zombies. Sung Wu tells Sok Wu to take care of his wife and leave him behind to distract the zombies, realizing that there isn't enough time. Sok Wu apologizes tearfully and releases go of the door, dragging Suen and Song Kyong towards the barred door. Sung Wu manages to inform his wife the name he has chosen for their newborn boy before he is consumed. The locked door is torn down, and the survivors securely pile into the compartment, though Ingle is too slow and gets bitten. Sok Wu angrily hits Yon Suk and demands to know why he did such a thing, realizing that Sung Wu and Ingle could have lived if the group hadn't closed the door. Yon Suk, unable to answer, lies to the others and insists that Sok Wu and his allies are infected. They force Sok Wu and the party that just entered the compartment into the hallway between their compartment and the conductor's car, instilling panic in the initial group that barricaded the door. When they are forced to leave, Yon Suk and the others use their neckties and shirts to tie down the knob and keep them from returning. Jongol, still stunned and speechless after witnessing her sister's untimely death, recognizes Ingle's face among the zombies in the doorway. She informs her infected sister that she lived a long and fulfilling life, and she knows that the compartment group's acts are what caused her sister's death. Jongol opens the door, enabling the zombies to flood the secure compartment, out of rage and defeat. The survivors inside the corridor can only watch as the group is devoured inside the compartment, they see shadows of people urgently clawing at the door they had just barricaded in a terrible twist of fate. The conductor receives word via the radio that Pusan has successfully resisted the zombie plague. However, when they approach a station just before Pusan, the train is cut off by track debris. Over the speaker, the conductor advises the remaining survivors on the train that he will find another train on an unblocked track to travel to Pusan and that they should follow him but wishes them luck because they would have to exit the train and survive traversing the zombie-infested rails. He exits his cockpit and discovers an empty road, where he finds a cargo train. He starts it up and proceeds down the track towards Pusan, looking for survivors on the tracks. Sok Wu and the others exit the train, unaware that Yon Suk had escaped the zombie horde in the compartment, by hiding in the bathroom. 
He hears the conductor's statement as well and fights his way out of the compartment, but numerous zombies pursue him as he exits. Meanwhile, Sokwu's squad is en route to the freight train, when a burning freight car crashes into the cars of an adjacent train, which falls and blocks their path. Jin He and Yong Guk are separated from the group. They enter one of the next train cars and exit through the door, not realizing that Yong Suk, who is being hunted by a zombie, is following them. Yong Suk gets inside the car and places Jin He behind the wheel, sacrificing her to the undead. Yong Guk fights off the zombie and collapses to the ground, cradling Jin He in his arms. Yong Suk ignores them, prying the door open and running for the freight train. As Jin He chokes and begins to change, Yong Guk sobs, wondering why fate had to be this way. As she bites his face and throat, he apologizes to Jin He for not telling her how he felt about her. Yong Suk rushes towards the freight train, but he twists his ankle on the tracks, and one of the zombies tailing him bites his ankle. The conductor runs off the train to assist, but Yong Suk betrays him and abandons him to the undead, just as he did with Jin He. As he boards the train alone, he ignores the conductor's cries for assistance. Meanwhile, the homeless guy, Suan, Sok Wu, and Song Kyong are stuck under a train full of zombies on the other side of the wreckage. The train's windows are on the verge of collapsing at any minute. Sok Wu discovers an entrance beneath the train and begins to climb through it, but a section of the train falls and shuts the hole before the other three can enter. A window is also shattered as a result of the impact and a small swarm of zombies emerges and crawls towards the three. The homeless guy, however, sacrifices himself to the zombies at the last moment, allowing Sok Wu to drag the debris aside for Song Kyong and Suen to escape. They dash towards the cargo train and get onto its outside platform. Sok Wu enters the cockpit but backs away when he notices Yon Suk, who is milky-eyed and diseased, in the conductor's seat. He immediately closes the door, but Yon Suk, although becoming a zombie, unlocks it because the virus has not reached his brain. Yong Suk approaches Sok Wu and asks him to take him home to Pusan, speaking as if he were a small child and reciting his address and mother's name. Yong Suk is surprised and weeps when Sok Wu informs him that he is infected, but he is fully changed within seconds. Sok Wu starts fighting with the zombified Yong Suk and nearly falls off the ledge of the car. Suin screams on the other side of the car platform, attracting Yong Suk who attacks Song Kyong and Suen. However, Sok Wu still fights, but Yong Suk bites his hand brutally. He successfully throws Yong Suk from the car. Recognizing that he is about to turn, he sits Suen and Song Kyong in the cockpit and instructs them on how to use the brakes once they arrive at Pusan Station. He then tries to get out of the car, but Suen begs him to stay and explains that on the day of her recital, she didn't finish singing Aloha, OE because she didn't see Sok Wu in the crowd she had been saving the song for her father. The two exchange emotional goodbyes, and Sok Wu takes Suen's hands in his before flinging him aside and shutting himself out of the cockpit. Suen starts screaming and crying for him to return. Sok Wu sobs as he moves towards the end of the train car, gripping his bloody hand, while the infection spreads. Suen continues to scream for him inside the cockpit, despite Song Kyong's efforts to hold her. He approaches the back of the train car gently, fighting the virus, and recalls Suen as an infant. The illness takes hold as he recalls his happiest memories of cuddling her and holding her small fingers and toes, his eyes turning white and veins turning dark. Despite being completely zombified, Sok Wu continues to think of Suen and smiles blissfully towards the sky before sliding off the car and into the tracks, it is left ambiguous as to whether this was due to his body spasming or him jumping off the car in an act of suicide to keep Suen and Song Kyong safe. Finally, the train car arrives in the tunnel leading to Pusan Station. The track, however, is obstructed by debris. The two exit the car and continue going along the tunnel, unaware that the Pusan military is watching them from the other side. One of the snipers reports their approach to his boss, who orders him to shoot him down because they can't tell if they're infected or not in the dark. Just as the sniper is about to pull the trigger, Suen begins to mournfully sing Aloha Oe to rally the exhausted Song Kyong to walk to the end of the tunnel. Hearing her song, the soldiers realize they are not infected and rush to their aid. Hope you enjoyed this dose of movies. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See ya!